Well, this is the last time we are going to push our keep it or crush it K10 into Tech Garage. Why is that? Well, today we're going to upgrade the suspension, the brakes, and most important, we're going to get this motor running. When I said push it, did I say we? <laughs> That's not going to work. Hey guys, give me a hand. Wee! Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we have our 1984 K10 pickup in the shop. You guys know this is part of the keep it or crush it segment. Yeah, it is uh, gonna be a keeper, there's no doubt about it. But you know, it all started right back there in the rear. And you know, back there with an old truck, everybody please be careful, there could be asbestos back there. So Dave and I wasn't gonna go back there. We sent Josh back there, but he was suited up. <laughs> he was ready to go. Yeah, we got him in a mask, glasses, earmuffs, the whole nine yards, and he got to hitting on that drum. I mean, a big hammer, man. And after a couple of slams and a few drops of sweat, the drum was free. He got the drum off once he did that. Well, he didn't have to worry about the shoes too much, so he just went in there with the tools and kind of just stripped the rear shoes off. Not being too gentle because we weren't gonna reuse them, Dave. We removed the differential cover. I should say they removed the differential cover. 10 bolts on there to take it off, simple enough. That gave us access to the pinion shaft pin. Now that thing, you can use a socket to, to get that thing out, but sometimes you'll find maybe you back it out too far and the socket gets trapped in a small space there, so it's best to use an open-end wrench I think we found out the hard way uh, working on these before. So use an open-ended wrench that enables you to sneak it out of that small space there. And then once that pin is removed, you can get to the C-clip. And I'm always marveling at the fact that an axle is held in place by this tiny little piece of metal. Uh, when you remove that C-clip, use a pick to get it off. Use a magnet to hold it and to actually remove it. That enables you to remove the axle, and that's a two-person job. You want to make sure that's steady and you're not banging on things as you, as you take it out of there, John. That gave them access to the backing plate back there. Now the backing plate that holds on the shoes and all the associated hardware back there for the shoes, we're not gonna use that anymore because we're converting over to discs. So four bolts, that came off. Now you're already deep into that differential. Go ahead and replace the bearings. It's a 30-year-old truck. So with the bearing slide hammer, Josh got in there, bam, bam, and Benjamin knocked those bearings out. Once they got those bearings out, they went ahead and cleaned the axle tube really, really good because 30 years of rust and debris in there, we want to make sure the new bearing is going to be good along with the seal. They got that cleaned up, took the bearing, found the right size adapter, and knocked the new bearing in the differential. So now they had a nice clean slate to work with, Dave. And remember with the drum brakes, the emergency brake is on the rear. And it's still going to be on the rear for this on the conversion kit. So we had to install the rear e-brake assembly that includes the bracket to hold it on where the backing plate was. Then on that same bracket is where we install the caliper. So that's pretty convenient. The kit works out really nicely that way. And once the caliper was on, it was time to install the axle. Again, a two-person job. You want to be very careful putting it in there. You don't want to pop that seal because then you'll have fluid everywhere and that's going to be a big mess. Yeah, and then they sent the rotor for the rears, which was nice because it bolted right up to their new hub assembly that you just bolted on or they bolted on. And then the caliper went on. That was nice, this setup. We can actually put the caliper on and like some Toyotas and other cars, it's really nice. The actual pads go through the top. So they just slip the pads in there, put the pins to hold it. And man, we had a brake system minus one thing, Dave. You got it, we need the emergency brake. And uh, we're gonna reconnect the original mechanical cable that we had for the emergency brake. So now we have that mechanical connection. And plus, as you mentioned earlier, the lines come with this, so we have the hydraulic connection as well. So we're, we're doubling up on that. Man, we not only improved the brakes, Dave, but man, this thing is gonna stop phenomenal. So all that's left, they left us with a caliper, man. I guess that's my job, but I got the pads installed. You can see the line right there. Just slip the caliper on. Oh, I got it twisted up. We don't wanna do that. They did all that work. And then Dave, I'm gonna twist that thing up. <laughs> Get the pads and the caliper slid in there. Make sure you lube all your pins, all your slides, get your torque specifications. Then we're gonna have to bleed the system. But before we did that, well, Benjamin, he swapped the master cylinder out. Couple of lines, new fluid, new master cylinder, flushed the system completely. Now all we have to do is bleed it, Dave, and then it's off to the suspension. And the suspension is what we're gonna see next when we come back to Tech Garage. We got new suspension all around and you're not gonna wanna miss that. Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com returns right after this. Thank you for tuning into Tech Garage. We hope you're enjoying the show because we have a great time making it. You can see some really fun behind the scenes stuff on our Facebook page every single week. And if you've missed an episode this season or any other, head on over to the Masters Entertainment Group website or YouTube page to get caught up. 
Keep it in park because Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, returns right after this. Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com is brought to you by rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Well, we got our brakes in tip top shape. It's looking good. Now we got to turn our attention to the suspension. And Dave, it's all about the geometry of the vehicle. Geometry is no joke. If you get it wrong, you see a lot of home jobs out there where people just throw something on the vehicle, ends up getting wonky. You can break a lot of parts that way in the suspension, maybe the drive shaft, and it's unsafe. Absolutely, and uh, not to mention the alignment and all the tire angles. And the first step was just taking the wheels off. And let me give you a tip. You guys at home, if you have a chance, spray it down with some penetrating oil. Every single suspension bolt you can, man, that gives you a mechanical advantage second to none. Dave, and you needed that. Absolutely, but once we got it, uh, we had to still put a little muscle into it, even though we sprayed it. Uh, there's only two bolts on the shocks there, the upper and lower bolts on the shock, and that is off. That's off. Once that came off, it was off to the rear leaf spring. Now on the leaf spring itself, the rear leaf spring has a rear bolt and a front bolt. So once we got those two off, well, it was ready for the leaf spring to come out of there. Well, yes, but we still had the U-bolts to get off here. So, uh, and this is the same technology. This blows me away. You know, in ancient Rome, they're using leaf springs made of leather on their on their wagons, and leaf springs haven't changed. Just the U-bolt, four bolts holding those U-bolts uh, on there, and then we can take off the, the leaf spring. And the comparison is amazing. Look at the difference between the two that actually four inch lift is built into that spring which is great because that's actually going to keep the geometry right it's going to keep the vehicle right and now you can go ahead and put them back in there yeah and to put the new ones on they didn't come with the bushings installed sometimes you might have to use a hammer to knock it in there on ours it was easy enough just to push in there and once we put those on just the front and rear bolts and we were good to go yeah and then you know we had it supported on jack stands remember you want to support that differential because once you remove the leaf spring you got nothing holding it up so those jack stands were still in place we went ahead and lifted it up got the pin in place made sure that it was right and then we just kind of put the new u-bolts on put the shock absorbers and dave it was off to the front and the front is the same john when you're taking off everything and when you're putting it back on same process but the big difference there john is the steering arm and that's where you talk about geometry once again yeah it makes all the difference in the world you don't want that thing tight you don't want stress on that you don't want an unsafe steering system and also speaking of steering we put on those front stabilizers Dave that's gonna make a huge difference when it comes to steering a 1984 truck with a gearbox well and you think about driving you know you had uh, if you're if you're off-roading you have bump steer you, you hit a bump and it kicks the steering wheel back in your hands the steering dampener these are horizontally opposed shocks and they keep the steering from flopping back and forth when you when you hit something like that. And you're going to love it. It's also going to give you a safer ride too. Man, looking at these brakes and looking at the suspension, I can't bear to put those old rusty wheels and tires back on there. The tires, those are second to none. I got a tire guy here who's going to talk all about them. Now this is Matt from Jim Whaley Tires. Now Matt, you're the general manager. Tell me a little bit about Jim Whaley. Well, Jim Whaley started uh, back in 1986 in Dothan, Alabama. Um, he's since branched out from there. We've got eight other locations plus our warehouse. Uh, we do pretty much everything from tires to suspension work all the way up to engine work. Now I know at Chipola College we cherish our educational business partnerships and industry partnerships and you guys do great things for our techs and our school, but you really hooked up our K-10 here. So talk about these BF Goodrest. Why did you guys choose these? Oh man, these tires are top of the line as far as all terrains go. They're a 10-ply tire, especially on this old truck here, beautiful tire to match with it. These tires go anywhere you want to, especially off-road. Boy, and they're going to do just that. These tires are going to be phenomenal and you guys don't want to miss it. We're going to put them on the vehicle during the commercial, lower the truck, and show you the stance. We'll be back with more Tech Garage brought to you by rockauto.com. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. We've got our 1984 Chevrolet K10 looking amazing. New suspension underneath, new tires, John. This thing has come a long way. Boy, is it ever. And it didn't start that way. I actually went to get the truck. I'm driving out in the middle of nowhere in the boonies. <laughs> kind of scared, but it was all right. Got out there. It was a guy's pastor. He's sitting out there in an actual tractor, and I saw the truck, man. Went out there, got my tetanus shot. Wasps, snakes, 
critters. You saw the snake skin in the earlier episodes, man. Made sure it was sound. It was good. So we went ahead and took the tractor, loaded it up, put it on a trailer over here to Chipola College Tech Garage, and here it is at this point, man. It's looking good. Just a few things missing. You know, we got to talk about the engine and the interior. You got it. We'll talk about the engine in a few minutes. The interior, we haven't addressed the new interior yet, but we started to clean the old interior out. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you're looking at the old seat, you know, 40 years old. That's, that needs to go, at least to be reupholstered. So we took the old seat out. To get to the bolts, you had to slide the seat backwards to get to the two front bolts. Slide it forward to get to the two bolts on the rear. Four bolts and two people to remove it. That's it. Yeah, and kudos to my wife and my son. Putting a lot of weekends up here getting this thing <laughs> apart. But Abante, he got the old seat out, and then he had to clean up that floor. And let me tell you something, man. I know you got children. This thing was 10 times anything you ever imagined in a minivan. There was junk down there from 30 years, Dave. That flooring, that debris had to come out. You got it. It was that old vinyl stuff. It wasn't carpet. And the black jujubes were all stuck to that. And you had who knows what else, <laughs> branches and, and twigs and everything. Back into that out, cleaned it up. It looks pretty nice. It does. You know, we're going to put those floor in the floor pan, the roll pans and stuff like that, but we'll deal with that maybe over the off season. So you guys join us on social media. We'll take a look at the inside. But you know, after we did that, the seat belts come out. Nothing left now except talk about some of the new parts. You got it. All kinds of stuff for this vehicle from rockauto.com. I'm going to go talk to Tom at the Rock Auto desk. In the meantime, show him what we got for the interior. Boy, and we got some stuff for the interior. You can see the seat right here. This is actually the upholstered seat. We had everything from the rubber door molding right here, everything, the trim molding, the floors, the window moldings, the side window moldings, all the way down to the inside crank, window handles, you name it, we have it. Door panels, the dash cover, new carpets and new mats. This interior is going to be phenomenal. But I know you want to hear the engine run as well, and we need to check in with Dave right now. Tech Garage is brought to you by rockauto.com and Tom Taylor's here once again from Rock Auto. Tom, how has rockauto.com changed, really revolutionized buying parts for your car? Well, back when we founded the business, one thing we wanted to do is give customers access to all those uh, paper catalogs and computers behind the traditional parts store counter. And, and we've done that, and since then, the number of catalogs and computers behind the parts store counter has, has doubled and tripled because all the new makes and models, and, and we've kept up with that. We've added new parts lines. We've added new shipping locations so the, the parts come even quicker to your house. You, you may not have to pay for next day shipping to get, get the parts to arrive the next day or, or within two days. Now, Rock Auto's been around for about two decades, and, mm -hmm. and in that time, you, you've had to evolve and change with the business. How, how have things gotten different for Rock Auto and, and better? Well, we've added a lot more um, brands, more suppliers. We have a lot more OE brands, um, Nissan, GM Direct, uh, Motorcraft, and, and just keeping up with all the new parts. The, the, the basic systems on the car are, are the same, but the way they monitor with di different sensors and the way they control it, it has changed. So there's just a steady stream of new parts to learn about and add to the catalog. As the world is changing, how has rockauto.com become even more important today than, to consumers than it's ever been? Well, a lot more uh, things like fluids, like engine oil and antifreeze, didn't used to be vehicle specific. It was just one antifreeze was in everything, and everybody put 10W30 in their crankcase, <laughs> and, and that's changed completely. There's, there's, uh, it's application. It's vehicle specific now. You look up your vehicle, you find the correct oil, the correct antifreeze, the correct brake fluid for your your exact car. And, and car prices have, have gone bonkers. We're, we're talking new cars and used cars as well. So how can Rock Auto help folks out there? Yeah, the, 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 we, we've kept prices low, so the, you may find the shock absorber that cost $20 20 years ago still cost $20 at Rock Auto, which helps. But you, you can afford the, compared to the cost of a new car, you can do a, a whole lot of maintenance, a whole lot of repairs on your existing car and, and save a fortune. Well, we thank Tom Taylor from rockauto.com for being here all season long. And uh, we're not done yet. There's still one more segment to go. We're going to answer some viewer emails when we come back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Well, we hope you're enjoying this episode of Tech Garage. I know we are. But you can also tune in to Motorhead Garage. Dave, you're a man of multi-talents and Motorhead Garage. Well, that's a great show. Well, the show's great because we show you all the latest technology and all the coolest aftermarket gear for your vehicle. It's the only place on TV that does that, John. Yeah, make sure you check them out on Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m., only on Motor Trend. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need.
Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now, Benjamin, our lead technician, well, he's finishing up on that engine. Can I start it yet? Can I start it yet? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to start that engine. And while he's doing that, I'm actually going over this Drive magazine here, and it's an innovation that still drives automotive aftermarket. Man, that guy looks familiar. What do you think of that? Man, I know a, that guy. That's a handsome dude. That's but anyway, cool. it does. And really, a quote I wanted to quote out of here, it's pretty neat. It says, I believe the inventors and creators in today's aftermarket are kin to the tinkers and pioneers of yesterday. Man, this is a testament of what's going on. Why do we want to trash this truck? We don't want to, man. Think of the ingenuity that went into this. This is amazing. And what better way to enjoy it than with a couple of uh, bubbly waters, right, yeah, guys? Absolutely. He'll pinkies Pink, up, right? Pinkies up, pinkies up. Go. It's bubbly water. <laughs> Yeah, such weirdos. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> now we need to go to the, <laughs> exactly. But you know, you guys been writing in and we have those email questions. We promised you that. We did them throughout the season, but I think we got three or four good ones right now. Dave, you what do you it. have? Yeah, the first one comes from Trayvon. He's up in Newport, Rhode Island. He's got a 2012 Silverado. He says his AC compressor went bad and he went to replace it. And when he got to the shop, they wouldn't do it without putting an accumulator in and the orifice tube. And he said that would add a lot of cost to the bill. He wants to know if that is normal and why they want to do it that way. And Josh, you seem to have the answer there. I got another can out of the cooler. I'm gonna pass this over to John real quick. He read that pretty nicely, but uh, he sounds pretty upset. He does. I should, should I read it again with an angry voice? Yeah, <laughs> but sometimes a lot of, it seems like a shop's trying to upcharge you when really they're not. If an orifice tube gets dirty, as Gardner has over here, you can see this dirty orifice tube, that keeps helps keep the debris out of the system. Now, when they ask you to replace the accumulator as well, there's a tiny screen down in the bottom of the accumulator and actually helps filter out the oil going back to your compressor. If that gets clogged up, then your compressor is not gonna get any oil. And your desiccant bag is in there as well. If that gets contaminated, it's not gonna be able to filter out the moisture in your system. So they're not cheating and they're actually putting these components in to protect their compressor because the compressor is a big investment and you wanna do that as well. Just replace all these components. They're not doing it to cheat you. They're doing it for a reason. You don't want that metal going around the system and getting back to the compressor. That's not a good thing. All right, well Gus is next up. He's up in Bismarck, North Dakota has a 2014 Dodge Ram, and the motor blew up. I'm wow. Sorry, Gus, that doesn't sound good. He said the truck's in good shape, and he's looking to buy a used motor, and he wants to know if there's anything he can check or look at in the new motor before buying it, or the used motor before buying it. Hey, if you're looking for a used motor, you can do the tricks. We're actually, back in show 10, we did the compression and we did the cylinder leakage test. Now, very inexpensive. You can get a gauge set that looks like this. This is a compression leak tester. Go down to the junkyard, get you an old battery, put it in the car, maybe even bring a starter. You can turn the motor over or the junkyard or whatever, the recycling center should do that and have some numbers on that compression. That's going to tell you a lot. Well, what are you looking for? Well, you want 90 PSI or more around the cylinders. That's what it takes really for an engine to fire. And you really don't want any big difference in between cylinders. So a compression test is a good thing. You can also, if you have an air compressor, you can do what's called a cylinder leakage test. Now a cylinder leakage test, we've done this here on Tech Garage before. Just bring an air compressor, screw it into the cylinder, bring the cylinder to top dead center, the valves are closed, and inject air into each one of the cylinders. Even though it's a used motor, the air should go nowhere. Now there may be 20% leakage by the rings, but if you hear it coming out the tailpipe, you got an exhaust valve problem. If you hear it coming out the intake, it's an intake valve problem. If it's bubbling in the radiator, it's a blown head gasket, or you hear a bunch coming out of the crankcase, well, your rings are bad. Stay away from that engine but you know Dave any good junkyard or recycling center should compression test the engine and give you some specs prior to buying it and that is pretty cool well, speaking of engines looks like uh, Benjamin's about ready to get started there so why don't you go help him out and we'll finish this up is it running yet is it running yet just get up there <laughs> Jerry's in Bakersfield Josh he's got a 2018 GMC Acadia he says it idles rough when it comes to a quick stop it has a two and a half liter four-cylinder engine and he's wondering if you have any ideas on how to help him well, with my car, the first thing I would try is actually to clean the throttle body. Um, they make some throttle body cleaner. They also make mass airflow sensor cleaner. So you want to be careful about which one you get. If you're going to clean your throttle body, make sure you follow the service manual because if it tells you not to push in on this butterfly valve, don't do it because if you push in on it, it can reset the home position. You might end up with a problem where you can't even start your vehicle. Good stuff, Josh. John, how's it coming up front? 
Getting close, Dave. Got the accompany distributor and computer command control, baby. No carburation here. Went through the setup wizard, got it all ready to go. I think we're ready to crank it. We got Benjamin, our man inside the truck. Benjamin, give it a shot, brother. Here we go. <laughs> work. Beautiful, Good man. Stuff, man. Yeah, cool. this thing is perfect, man. Kind of like the whole season. This thing is pretty nice. It is really nice. It's part of our Keep It or Crush It segment, which actually was cool because we got a lot of great vehicles, but it kind of flopped because we were trying to flip some of these vehicles to make a profit. Wait a minute, flop? No, the vehicles were good. Yeah, the profit flop, man. Well, Start out with the van. Josh, uh, the van. I like the van. It's nice. I'm going to keep the van. Yeah, with 20 kids, I think the van's going to do <laughs> no, you well. Mine is. Yeah, it's probably about 20. It's close yeah, to absolutely. <laughs> Benjamin <laughs> fell in love with the F-250, man. Guess what? He's driving it. Of course. And Avante, my son, well, this one's going to him, man. I'm not getting rid of any of them. I love it. They're all keep it, Dave. And what about yours? Well, I didn't do so well, John. <laughs> I, had, I had the Scion and that. Yeah, we crushed that. So we, it was kind of a bad decision there. Yeah, that's all right. We got your Yugo out back. We'll get you one. Don't worry about it. All right, next season on Tech Garage, we're working on a Yugo. <laughs> if we can find one. Yep. You guys, make sure you join us on social media. We're going to still be around. This is the end of the season. This has been a phenomenal season. Thanks to Chipola College. Thanks to our sponsor, rockauto.com. And all you guys, we can't do it without you. And the crew, Dave. You got it. Best crew in television. Thank you all. Thank you for watching Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. We'll see you next season. In the meantime, catch us on the YouTubes for episodes from the past nine seasons and beyond. You got it. See ya. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Production assistance provided by Chipola College in Mariana, Florida. Chipola was founded in 1947 and it was recently ranked among the top three community colleges in the United States.